Hey, what's up? I'm Luke, and this is an introductory video to show you how to download Cursor and use it to automate your computer and eventually, in future videos, do tons of cool stuff. But particularly, we're going to be recording a voice memo and transcribing it, all for free. Let's go ahead and get Cursor downloaded and set up. The first thing that I'm going to do is create an account. Cursor is a paid tool, however, there's a two-week free trial where you can try it out. I'll enter my information, and once the sign-in code arrives, I'll go ahead and enter that as well. You'll have to enter your payment information, and from there, just to make sure you're not charged, I'll click on Manage Subscription, Cancel Subscription. That way, you can make sure that you're not charged if you forget about it. Next, let's download Cursor. I'll click on the top right for the profile, and download for my system. I'll open up the DMG, drag it to my Applications folder. From there, I'll double-click this Applications folder here and navigate to Cursor and do Command-O for Open. From here, I'll go to the Cursor menu at the top left, Settings, Cursor Settings. Once I get here, I'll go ahead and click Sign In. And then if you need, go ahead and re-log in. I was using Firefox, so this wasn't my default browser. Once I log in, I'll confirm that I'm trying to log in on desktop. Click Open Cursor. And then right here, I should see that I'm signed in. Now let's go ahead and change a couple settings. For privacy, I'm going to go ahead and do Privacy Mode, so I don't share my data. You can do whatever you'd like. I'll click on Chat. I'll scroll down to Auto Run. This allows Cursor to automate your computer, and I'll show you the settings that will allow for it to do it in a limited way. I'll make sure that Auto Run Mode is selected. File Deletion Protection is selected. And then External File Protection, I'll make sure to turn it off. More about that later. Next, on my desktop, I'm going to make a folder and call it Cursor Example. From here, I'll drag this folder on the cursor icon in the dock. Another way to open it is just choose File, Open Folder, and then navigate to your desktop and then find the folder that you just created. Now, if you've used DeepSeek, Claude, or ChatGPT before on a web interface, it's exactly like this, but instead of having your chat saved on the left side, these are actual files on your computer. So if I have a TXT document, in my folder on my computer, it's going to also show up here in the sidebar. So basically the sidebar is just your file navigation. And then Cursor with the agent, which is right here, it will be able to create and control files within this folder. If we go back to the Cursor settings real quick, you don't have to, but when it says external file protection, if you would want to limit Cursor to just this folder, you would turn this on. I like to leave it off because sometimes scripts will download things or I'll take screenshots and then I could tell Cursor to look on the desktop or the downloads folder. It usually doesn't wander outside of the folder unless there's a specific reason to, which you'll know about because you'll be instructing it to do so. My cursor might look a little bit different than yours. It's because I have a theme activated. I'm going to go ahead and do Command Plus to make the interface a little bit bigger so we can see it better. And then next, I'm going to record a voice memo. This is a voice memo. This is a voice memo. Test one, two, three. I'm gonna go ahead and send the voice memo to my computer and it's currently in the downloads folder. So let's use the agent to move it to our workspace or the folder that we created in cursor. And I'll just say, can you get the latest recording in the downloads folder? If this start indexing comes up, it's just cursor asking to see what files are in our workspace folder. So you can click start indexing and then I'll close the cursor settings so that way it goes away. It just helps to get a head start on what's in your folder. So the agent saw our recording and it just moved it to our folder. Now, what's happening all on the side? Basically, cursor has access to the terminal. What is the terminal? Let's back up a little bit. So if I open a finder window and I create a new folder and call it test01, that's how to create a folder in finder, which is a GUI, graphic user interface. Terminal is a CLI, command line interface. So if I wanted to do the same thing, I would use text 
to describe or to relay what I want the computer to do. So if I want to go to the desktop, I would do a change directory command. Now you don't have to know these commands, I'm just doing an illustration of what the difference is between GUI and CLI. And if I wanted to make a folder, I would mkdir make directory test2. And you can see that it showed up in the finder. So that's where cursor is very powerful because it can access the command line interface and do things on the computer for you via the terminal or the command line. So let's go back to cursor. And in general, using cursor, you never have to know what exactly is going on on the right. You can always ask cursor about it afterwards if you'd like to know. You just have to know, did it work or not? So in my previous prompt, I asked Cursor to move the voice recording to our folder. Did it work? Do I see it? Yes, we're good. So our next concept. When you buy applications or apps or tools that you can use normally or in a GUI, those cost money. Most tools are available for free via the command line interface. I'm gonna do a more video on that, but basically Cursor, which you can type in normal language to do things, now gives you access to the command line interface, AKA things for free. More on that later. This is our first video, so I'm gonna to try to keep it light. So next, I wanna transcribe this video. A key word to use is terminal tool. So I'm gonna ask, what's the best terminal tool to transcribe something? Free. I could also Google this, but just, you know, so that way you can get familiar with terminal tools. So Whisper, created by OpenAI, it actually is the best. So I'm gonna say, let's go ahead and install Whisper and transcribe our voice memo. I'm gonna ask it to organize the files into subfolders so that way it's nice and tidy. So I already have it installed and it can detect that. So it's gonna go ahead and do its thing. It can read where the voice memo is. It's gonna use Whisper to transcribe it and then we'll just wait for the results. As long as you see this stop item here, it means that it's running. If it ever takes too long, you can push stop and just say, hey, keep going. With this AI tool, you become the cheerleader or the manager figuring things out, making decisions, but the day-to-day -day work now can be handled by the computer. So great, it finished. It's giving me a summary of what it did. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to the transcriptions folder, click on it. Now cursor, backing up a little bit, is basically just like a fancy text editor. The text or code can be saved in the folder that you created. So sometimes you might see it create Python scripts and all that stuff. If you're unsure of what's what, you can ask, tell it to organize. You don't have to really pay too much attention here if you don't want to. So you can see, as a voice memo, one, two, three. Now the transcription wasn't perfect. There's different settings. And I'll go ahead and say, are there settings to make the transcription better? Also, this is an older phone, so the microphone doesn't work that well. So it's telling me a bunch of stuff that I don't really understand. So I'm just gonna say, can you redo it, make a new version, and use the best quality? Because it says as a voice memo, and I'm not really sure that I said that, so it could be a microphone error or a transcription error. So if you're not happy with the results, just talk to the model who will handle all of the code for you. So it'll transcribe, but this is a first video of many on how I'm gonna show you how you can automate your computer and also to create anything that your heart desires, any tool, and how to eventually make that tool amazing and take ideas and information from professionals and incorporate it in your workflow. So that way, when you vibe code, you can make sure to build things that are built well. So it made several files in different formats. I didn't really ask for that, but sometimes the model predicts things. And so you can be more specific later, but we can see as a voice memo test one, two, three. So it's probably just a microphone problem. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, make a comment below, join the Slack channel, or send me an email. I'd love to hear how it went for you. Thanks.